Today I'm going to show you all the things you're going to need to install a carburetor on your engine and some of the little things that you may forget about and some of the things you definitely are going to have to have. So let's get started. So when you're installing a new carburetor on your vehicle, there's three things that you need to think about before you get started. That is fuel control, how the fuel is going to get to the carburetor, throttle control, how you're going to hook it up to the gas pedal, and the last one, and sometimes the most critical one, is how you're going to mount the carburetor to the actual intake manifold. Those three things there, if you break them down into those three little categories, it'll make it a little bit easier for you to figure out what's going on. So let's talk about the, uh, the, one of the most important ones, obviously, and that's how to mount the carburetor to the intake manifold. So when you're mounting the carburetor on an intake, you have to take a couple of things to in, into consideration. Your biggest one is what type of intake manifold you have. What, what do the runners look like on the top? What's the mounting surface look like? And if you have a regular square flange style intake manifold, uh, Performer RPM, some of the Wyand intakes, most of the Holly intakes, most all of those are just a regular square flange 4150 style carburetor mounting pad. And that's fairly easy. So we'll talk about that first and we'll talk about the other one in here in just a quick minute. But you've heard me talk about this before. I did a video on, on how to control heat soak within a carburetor because it's really the most critical thing that happens with today's ethanol. The fuel's horrible and you're just going to get those really ugly situations where you drive around for a while, engine gets up to operating temperature, you go shut it off, go in, get a get a drink or, or, or pop into a friend's house real quick. Ten minutes later you go to start it and it just cranks and cranks and cranks and floods and it's because the ethanol is boiling in the carburetor. Ethanol boils at 180 degrees like we've talked about in the past. It doesn't take long for these to heat. So the, how you get rid of that, one of the big ones, is to isolate that. Now these are both one-inch spacers. I use these fairly frequently. This is a black phenolic plastic and this is a wood laminate. I think that the wood laminate probably does a little bit better job of blocking the heat. I can't tell you that for sure. I haven't taken temperatures of the carburetor. It just feels like I have less of those issues when I use the phenolic or the, the wood laminate spacer. Now the black plastic works really, really well. I have no problem putting that on. Like I said, these are both one inch spacers. They make them in half inch. I think they make them all the way up to three inches or something like that run the thickest spacer that you can on your intake manifold you're just you're not worried about adding runner volume you're not worried about you know what the effects on performance are there there are some but it's minimal it's probably five horsepower i don't know you there's probably plenty of other folks that have dynoed that to see what these are worth what you're trying to do is block the heat coming into the carburetor so always 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 count on running a spacer if you can, depending on hood, your hood clearance, and like I say, the wood laminate's my favorite. Hardware, make sure you have the right length hardware to go through it. Obviously, the thicker the spacer, the longer the hardware needs to be. The other side of that is gaskets. Now, I've used this Mr. Gasket 54 carburetor gla gasket for 30-some years. I really like it. It's always really, really nice, spongy, uh, you know, seems to seal very well. Sometimes the gaskets that you get when you buy a spacer kit aren't that great and they're just kind of the cheapest thing that they could throw in there to call it a gasket so i usually typically don't use these I almost always upgrade to that mr gasket 54 if you're using the open plenum uh, and most hardware stores get it or you can get it wherever you get your speed parts so that's the square flange and let's talk about the other one real quick too now with this style of intake manifold, it's a little bit more like a spread bore style where the secondaries are larger, the primaries are smaller, and the mounting pad or surface is a little bit different. It's not that regular square flange pad that you see on some intake manifolds. This one is made for dual purpose. It's made to use that, that spread bore style carburetor or a square square flange carburetor also bolts up to this as well. Now typically this, these intake manifolds will give you a adapter that goes on and what that does, it's not really an adapter, but what it does help do is help seal these areas down below that are very thin and give you a really good solid mounting surface. And I don't have any issue with these, they, they you know, people worry that they're going to leak. Um, as long as you've got a good uh, gasket on there, they're not going to leak. Um, 
you know, the, the sur as long as the surface here is flat and there's no issues with it, you're, you're not going to have any problems with it. That where you run into issues with it is you can see a little bit of overhang here. And I, again, some people will say that this is going to hurt the airflow of the carburetor into it. And I don't doubt that. It probably does have some effect on it. I have not tested that. I have not dynoed that. I don't know that anybody has. So, I, I mean, I guess there's probably some videos out there on it, but that's a consideration to take into it. Also, when you're bolting that square flange onto there, it's the same thing. It doesn't, everything's a little bit off here. And it's just the way it is. You're not going to, it's not the best way to do it, but it does work. So mounting the carburetor is is one of the hardest ones to do because quite honestly, there's so many different options within it and there's so many different intake styles that you have to be prepared for it before you leave the auto parts store to get home. Now, the other side of that is if you have that square flange intake and you want to adapt it to a spread bore style in something that's a little more compact and even uh edelbrock does make an adapter and i think holly mr gasket transdap they all make that adapter to go from a spread bore style intake to a square flange intake um, and i'll leave a link down to that one down below if that's what you're working on but again does the same thing but it's not perfect and yeah i guess if you wanted to you could take a, a dremel and kind of route out those a little bit to make sure that you get a little bit better airflow into it but i don't think it's going to make that much of a difference you may pick up a little bit more torque um you may pick a little bit up on the top end with horsepower but it's hard to say so anyway the mounting is the critical one if you're using a square flange carburetor and a spread bore style intake you need to be careful of how, what mounting hardware that you're going to use to mount it up now there's a lot of pieces and parts to the fuel system side of this so let's break these down a little bit smaller and talk about them individually now fuel pumps is a, is a where we start with this if you're going to use the mechanical pump that's already on the engine then typically you already have everything you need as far as lines and hookups go there. But sometimes you just need to either upgrade or change the fuel line if you're running a rubber hose out of the uh, pump itself up to the carburetor, then plan on maybe getting some new line to go there. If you're going to change and upgrade to a electric style pump that's mounted towards the rear of the vehicle near the gas tank, then what your consideration there is where to mount it. It's got to be below the fuel line and fittings and hoses and everything that you're going to need either to reconnect that up to the hard line or to create a new fuel line going forward. So if you're going to go this route, you've got some more planning to do. If you're going to go this route, it's just sometimes it's just updating and refreshing. Again, it's just going to vary a little bit on your application, but this is where you need to start planning right here with the pump. Now, if you're going to a new carburetor, you're changing one from the factory Quadrajet or whatever Ford uses on theirs or Thermoquad or whatever. Now you have to consider how to route the fuel to the new carburetor and choosing a fuel line is important. Now, this little one from Metalbrock is fairly inexpensive. It's just the line itself, an adapter for the end for a bar bend hose, and that's it. There are ones that come with a filter in it as well, which... Eh, it's not a bad idea if you don't have any other filtration. We'll talk about that here in a quick second, but that's a really good easy mount for that Edelbrock carburetor. The Holly is a little bit different because most of the Hollies, if it's a, uh, as long as it's not a, you know, oddball 1850-3310, I'm not even sure if they're dual feed. So, uh, but the Edelbrock carburetor, the Holly carburetors are a dual feed, one for each bowl. So that's another good fuel line. Uh, Edelbrock also makes that one uh, and both of those work fairly well. But don't leave the auto parts store or don't click, uh, you know, uh, check out at Summit before you consider what fuel line and how you're going to mount to the carburetor. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos on how to set up a fuel system, my ultimate carb tuning guide for the Edelbrock carburetor, the pressure regulator is a very, very critical piece of that puzzle because these carburetors and the fuel pumps that I just showed you don't have a built-in pressure regulator. And anything you can do to add another step of tuning to these analog style pieces, the better off you'll be. It's just another tuning point. It's another place you can make an adjustment. It's another place where you can add or limit fuel to it. So having a good pressure regulator, I know it's, if you've never run one in the past, you think, well, what would I need one for now? Again, it's that reason right there. Give yourself another adjustment point. Send the right pressure to the carburetor. Edelbrock makes some fairly inexpensive ones. I'm a big fan of the automotive stuff. 
I tend to use a lot of it and then use a good gauge. This is a liquid filled one. You don't have to use one. This one happens to be for an EFI setup, but a good regulator and a gauge is a must when you're doing a carburetor. So go ahead and buy that as well. Now filters are a critical part to this because any junk or garbage in the fuel system that gets to the carburetors is going to seriously affect how they run. Needle and seats get clogged, the fuel inlet gets clogged, the squirters get clogged. There's just a, a whole host of problems that happen, especially if you have ethanol based fuel, more garbage and crap gets into the fuel system anyway. So go ahead and do good fuel filters. Now we've talked about this a hundred times it seems like, and, and it's worth repeating, but fuel filters position within a fuel system is very critical. If you're running an externally mounted pump, meaning a pump that's not mounted in the fuel tank, run two fuel filters, one before the pump and one after the pump. 10 micron and 100 micron. The reason for that is you want some varying stages in, in how it filters, but most and just as critical is you don't want to have the filtration affect how much pressure is getting to the carburetor. If you set the carburetor for 6 PSI, you don't want to drop pressure at the filter because it's restrictive. And that's why you run the regulator where you do, but run the filters that way as well. You can run a single 40 micron filter. You're probably going to be fine with it. Just depends on how gunky and nasty the fuel system is. But for sure, filters are a big, big part of this. And you're you just spent a lot of money on a brand new carburetor Pro protect that investment filters are relatively inexpensive again i'm a big fan of the aeromotive stuff because the elements are replaceable in them i've just gotten used to using them and you've heard me talk about them quite a bit over the years so it doesn't matter what brand i guess you choose just choose a good filter and make sure you have them in the right spot in the right size and and like i said protect that investment last but not least is how to hook up the the throttle side of the carburetor now there is literally probably hundreds of ways of doing this these are just two one way of doing it and we'll talk about uh, some of the others but one thing to take into consideration before you do it if you're an automatic transmission guy you will need the adapter to go on the side of the throttle here to adapt the carburetor for your automatic transmission hookup you've got the kick down cable that comes on on there that you're going to need to to deal with Edelbrock makes a whole host of these. Now, this one happens to be for the Chrysler or the GM style. Uh, there's ones for Ford, and there's literally uh, several dozen of these different types. So if you go onto the manufacturer's website uh, and take a look at whether it's Edelbrock, whether it's Holly, uh, I think uh, maybe Transdapter Gasket also has that as well. It's been a while since I looked. I, I almost exclusively use the Edelbrock stuff there. Just look and see what your transmission or, or car you're trying to hook it up to and you'll find the right adapter cable or the right adapter bracket. The other side is hooking up the fuel side of it to the carburetor and, and how it's going to uh, attach to the throttle cable. Now, if you've got the old style, uh, like the Chevelle had on it, where it's got the rod that comes out of it, it's all rod mechanical, there's no cable to it, then it just usually just plugs right in and you're, you're good to go. Um, if you're using a cable style, then you've got some different ways to, to mount the cable to it. And like I said, there is a dozen different ways of doing this. Some fairly inexpensive, some fairly expensive. But one thing to take into consideration is just to choose something that's quality. You know, a $20 throttle cable hookup is probably going to work okay. But for how long? How, how long till it starts flexing and wearing out and... You know, you don't get the nice smooth operation with it. So spend a little bit of money on the throttle cable. You're going to need it anyway. It's a good long-term investment. You can continue to use it, but certainly a good one that, that will mount it uh, properly to it where you can get a good, you know, kick down for, if you're an automatic guy and a good smooth operation for the cable to operate to the gas pedal. That's what you're looking for here. So that's really the basic things that you're going to need to kind of get set up here. Now, it's just really about planning ahead what do you already have that you're going to reuse for your new setup what do you need to buy and what are some of the troubles that you're going to run into again there's some really really good detail in here you know this whole setup probably between if you're going to buy a new fuel system carburetor brackets fuel line everything you could spend up to a thousand dollars on the on the thing that's not out of the realm of possibility depending on how expensive the carburetor is and whether you buy a remand one or a brand new one but just take all those things into consideration. They're not 
Again, nothing here is overly complicated, but if you don't know about it, it's it's the most frustrating thing in the world to be at home and trying to get things set up and bolt it on and figure you're going to drive the same day. And next thing you know, you're missing a, you know, a transmission, you know, bracket, kick down cable. You're, you know, you forgot to buy a, a, a pressure regulator a gauge for your, you know, for the regulator. So again, a lot of things are very frustrating with it, but it doesn't have to be. Just think about all the systems and think of it in those three ways throttle hookup, fuel hookup, and how you're going to mount the carburetor to the intake manifold. You think of those in those three different systems, you should be okay. If you have any questions about this, don't hesitate. Please leave them down below. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you got something out of the video, please give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. And certainly YouTube likes that as well. So anyway, if, uh, if there's any questions, don't hesitate. Leave them down below and uh, we will catch you on the next video. We'll see you guys.